gorgeous myself also. My name Lupita will be moderator at this event. And I hope this event will be enjoyable and worthy of knowledge. Before we start for this event today, I would love us to pray first according to your own religion and belief. So everyone, let's pray start together. Yeah, thank you. And the next session, we will listening class from Dr. Faiz bin Masnab. Yeah, from Dr. Faiz, you can start for this class today. Thank you. Okay, uh, may I start the class? Yes, you can. Okay, uh, the last eh? Bisa, 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 bisa di kelas yeah. orang. Okay. Okay, uh, okay, Assalamualaikum and good afternoon uh, to all the audience. Okay, uh, first of all, I would like to thank to the uh, Universitas Stockholm for uh, inviting us, okay, from Unimap, okay, to give some lecture lah, okay. Uh, regarding this slide, uh, our lecture today, so I believe uh, it's around uh, one hour lah, okay. So I'm going to cover maybe one or two chapter, okay, regarding the uh, entrepreneurships. So uh, I, it won't take uh, long lah. Uh, it might not be more, uh, uh, it, it, it might not be two hours uh, lecture. Okay, so it might be less than that. Okay, so uh, without further ado, so I will uh, start with the chapter one. Okay. Okay, uh, bisa lihat enggak? Bisa. Bisa ya, okay. Okay, I will start the, the slide. Okay, uh, today is about the entrepreneurship, okay, uh, which is about uh, introduction. So, uh, we want to see what is mean by the entrepreneurship, okay, what is the entrepreneur, and then the concept, and then who are the entrepreneurs, and why society, okay, why our country, our people need entrepreneurs, and then the contributions of this uh, entrepreneur to the society, okay, and to the country, and then what characteristic. Okay, uh, uh, based on the previous uh, literature, okay, actually they are uh, a lot of definition lah when we talk about the uh, definition of the entrepreneurs. Okay, uh, now we look at the simple definition first. Okay, the entrepreneur is means that uh, willingness to take responsibility and also uh, though it refers to someone who would like to try something new. Okay, that is the simple uh, definition lah. Okay, but then uh, okay in Malay in Malay, uh, in Bahasa so uh, we call it usahawan. Okay. Uh, it also means an uh, effort or willingness to do or complete a, start, a task, okay? And then we have, uh, according to the several scholar, okay, uh, from the previous year, okay? It refers to the individuals who are always alert about business opportunity. So when we talk about the business opportunity, it means that uh, when someone recognize the idea, when someone got the ideas, to start the business, to create the revenue, okay, to sell the product, okay, uh, because not everyone can afford to recognize the opportunity, okay. If we talk about the class, okay, if uh, let's say if everyone attend the class, okay, it's about the business, how to start the business, but then not everyone will recognize the opportunity because only some of the people can recognize it, okay. So that is why uh, not everyone can be entrepreneurs. Uh, and then, according to the Peters, okay, uh, entrepreneurs is someone who actually search for changes, okay, and then after they find the change and then they respond to it and then they start to exploit, okay. So uh, it also refers to the opportunities, lah, okay. And then, uh, according to Kuratko, uh, it's someone who undertake, okay, to organize, manage, and assume the risk, okay. Because when we talk about the entrepreneurs, when we talk about the business, so of course we have, we cannot run from the risk, okay, the risk lah. So the risk is means that we have to uh, spend, we have to spend our money, we have to spend our effort, our time, our ideas, okay. 
So we are not sure whether our effort, okay, uh, the thing that we spend will be profitable or not. Okay, whether we can get the return or not. So that is why we call it the risk. Lah, okay, so when we invest uh, everything that we have into the business, so actually we risk everything that we have. Okay, because we are not certain whether we can get the return or we can get the profit or not. So that's why we call the risk. Okay, and then uh, according to Dav, okay, uh, entrepreneurs is uh, he or she who assume the financial and also legal risk. Okay. And then uh, this is uh, some more, okay. For example, from Shun Peter, we have uh, they say that uh, it's a combination of new activities, okay. So it can be uh, activities of product development, okay, markets research, uh, sourcing for raw material, and then manufacturing approach, and also new organizational structure, okay. And then others say that. Uh, Entrepreneurship is activity that result in benefit. Okay, and then uh, compete for opportunities. Okay, because uh, in the business, okay, when we start the business, of course we we going to compete with other entrepreneurs and other uh, organizations. So that's why uh, we cannot run from the competitions. Okay, and then according to me, uh, entrepreneurship is a creative process. Okay. Uh, in order to make uh, your to make your business okay uh, attractive to the customer okay be, to become different from other business so you have to be creative okay and then uh, creation of new organization okay this is the the, the common things lah, okay it is a practice begin with the action and creation of new organization so this is uh, according to the merit okay now we look at the concept of the entrepreneurship. Okay, uh, actually this is uh, what uh, we call the entrepreneurship. Lah, okay, we can see entrepreneurship is a process. Okay, uh, when we talk about the entrepreneurship, okay, uh, actually anyone can be an entrepreneur. But then uh, when uh, everyone was born, okay, what uh, every people uh, that is born, uh, of course, they are not. They don't know how to be an entrepreneur. Okay, they don't know how to start the business. Okay, so this okay, the entrepreneurship is actually a process whereby somebody or uh, a person learn okay to be an entrepreneur. Actually, they have to go through some steps, lah. Okay, maybe they have learn from the classes, learn from the uh, lecturer. Okay, they uh, see their seniors. Okay, their parents or their friends or other people uh, from the uh, around them okay so when they learn how to be how to start the business okay how the step is taken so that is what we call a process lah, okay so it means that okay in order to be involved in entrepreneurship okay uh, somebody or someone have to go through the process okay and then emphasize on creativity in consolidating firm resources okay because uh, when we want to start the business of course lah, we have to combine all the things that we have okay, in one organization. For example, we have manpower, we have uh, money, we have uh, networking, okay, we have knowledge and information. So when we start the business, okay, uh, when we talk about entrepreneurship, we have to uh, combine all these resources, okay, and then we make sure that they are working together uh, efficiently. Right, and then they need to improve wellness. Okay, uh, entrepreneurship is not uh, solely about the getting uh, getting the profit. Okay, gaining the uh, the revenues lah. But then uh, we have to consider about our health. Okay, how our business impact our uh, family, our relationship with other people, and then how our company can improve the well being of. Uh, our society, okay, whether our product is uh, can be used by the people, by the customer or not, okay. So that uh, when we run the business, when we have the uh, manufacturing facilities, okay, so uh, does our business affect, can give negative impact to the society or not, okay. So we have to uh, take care of all that thing, lah, okay. So the main purpose of entrepreneurship is also to need to improve the uh, ourselves, our uh, our family, and also the society around us. 
So that is uh, the concept, lah. Okay, the concept of entrepreneurship. So we want to see who are actually the entrepreneurs. Okay, what are the uh, characteristic of uh, successful entrepreneurs? Okay, so uh, it refers to those enthusiastic vision. Okay, those uh, who drive uh, force of the enterprise, and then it has a. Uh, several ideas, they have uh, creative ideas, okay, to make sure that uh, the firm are different, okay? Because in order to survive in the business, okay, especially if you are a new business, you are a new entrepreneur, of course, you cannot uh, just simply or blindly follow other entrepreneurs, right? You want to create your own brand, you, have, you want to create your own, uh, what do you call uh, uniqueness okay that the entrepreneur or that the customer can recognize so that they will recognize your brand they will remember your brand and also the product that you offer okay so in order to make sure that the customer knows about our brand and our product so we have to have a uh, creative ideas okay and then in order to maintain your businesses so uh we need to have passion okay it means that uh we really love what we do okay what we does and then uh it's not something that we are forced to do but then it actually is our ambitions okay that is what we call it passions and then persistent and also determination okay uh and then take initial responsibility and then take calculated risk okay uh, when we talk about responsibility and also the risk so uh it refers to the how you spend okay your time and also your effort Okay, how you uh, invest, okay, the monies, and then how you uh, take care of your employees, okay, how you uh, sell your product and promote your product in the uh, market, okay. So, uh, we got whether the customer can accept it or not, so you still have to take the risk, lah, okay. Maybe in the first year of your business, okay, maybe your, your business is not... Uh, getting uh, much profit, okay? Because that is uh, usually, that is the first, the, 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 the common problem lah, okay? For the new firm, okay? For the new entrepreneurs, because usually uh, in order to get the customer trust, okay? To buy our product is quite hard lah in the first two or uh, in the first one or two years, okay? And then after that, uh, over time, so when people knows about our brand, when we do the uh, promotion, okay? When we do the advertisement, so from that we can get more and more profit lah, okay? And then positive thinker, okay? And good decision maker. So we cannot, uh, we have to be positive lah, okay? Or maybe because let's say if our first action, okay, doesn't work and then we can uh, move to the next step. Okay, we can uh, switch to the next uh, alternative, okay? Maybe uh, that is why lah, uh, for the entrepreneur, they need to have passion, okay? Because when they love what they do, so, they can simply do the thing without, uh, I mean, uh, it can be more creative, like, okay, because we, when we love doing something else, or something that we, that we like, okay, of course, the idea will come, okay. So, uh, that is what we call the passion, okay, and positive thinker, okay. So, now we look at the uh, society, like, okay, from the uh, why so? Okay, why society need the entrepreneurs? Okay, in order to utilize production factors such as land, capital, technology in producing creative product. Okay, in our countries, okay, in even in Indonesian country, okay, uh, I believe uh, Indonesian have a lot of land, right? And they have a lot of uh, island. Right? They have very beautiful island, even thousand islands, right? So. Those are actually the benefit lah that uh, is granted to the Indonesia because uh, from that maybe uh, the country can produce a lot of the entrepreneurs that is involved in the tourism industry. Okay, because uh, Indonesia have a lot of abundant abundance uh, island and land, right? And then Indonesia have a uh, what we call the uh, the land that is suitable to be. Uh, to plant the palm oils, right? And then uh, that is suitable for the agriculture uh, industry. So actually that 
think will give the benefit lah to the uh, entrepreneurs in Indonesia to start the business. So the task of the entrepreneur in Indonesia is they must utilize all these factors of production, such as land, capital, and technology that they have in order to make sure that uh, they can compete. Okay, not only among the Indonesians and also. Sometimes if you can produce a better product, okay, at a lower cost, at a lower price, then you can have the advantages to export that product to the uh, other countries, okay. And then to identify opportunities from the environment by increasing the activity that will be beneficial to the society, okay. And then to select the best approach to utilize all the production factors in order to minimize waste in entrepreneurship activities. Okay, production factors is, is referred to this, this uh, nila, okay, these three things, okay, and then for the benefit of future generation by providing a good platform such as infrastructure and also uh, and environments, okay. Sometimes when we uh, refer to the organization, okay, to the business, they are not only uh, the, the the main aims, okay, of the business is not uh, only to make the profit, but then they can influence how society live okay uh, currently and also in the future okay for example now this we look at uh, we are using technologies right we have smartphone we have computer tablet we have a uh, laptop right all these uh, technologies all these products are actually the creation from the businesses okay for example we are the popular uh, brand okay that we commonly see in the market is a uh, smartphone uh, we have the Apple, okay? we have Samsung, we have um, Vivo, right, and Redmi. So those are actually the brand, okay, the businesses that have changed the way human live nowadays, right? Maybe uh, if you look at 10 years behind, okay, back then, 10 years ago, we don't have, we don't have a smartphone, okay? So the way we live is different, okay? The way we attend the class, the way we... Uh, engage in a meeting is different, right? Now, due to the smartphone, due to the introduction of smartphone by these companies, okay, by these brands, so it actually have uh, benefit the society. It actually have changed the way society live nowadays, okay? So that is what we call the uh, future generation. How uh, the business can shape the future generation, it can give the benefit, lah. it can give uh, advantages to the society. Okay, uh, nowadays and also in the futures. And then, contribution of the entrepreneurs. Okay, developing new markets. Okay, same goes to the one that I explained. Okay, uh, before this, maybe we don't have uh, uh, what we call the market in the uh, smartphone. Okay, and now, now due to the uh, introduction of smartphone, okay, we have uh, the entrepreneur who are involved in the uh, service that provide repair for smartphone, right? Okay, but, uh, if you look at in other industry, uh, if you talk about the automobile industry, right? Uh, motor car, lah, okay? Uh, creator, okay? So, uh, when the, what we call the main business, okay, when they introduce uh, the automobile okay, in the market, of course, lah, it can benefit other entrepreneurs as well because Okay, other entrepreneurs, they can sell this paper of the car. They can open up the workshop for the, the, the car. Right? They can offer service for the aircon, okay, uh, for, uh, for the change of new tire, okay, for the painting of the, the car, and then for the uh, towing uh, repair, right? okay, repair uh, in the automobile industry. And then uh, there are a lot of things, okay, actually that, uh, related to the main industry, okay? That is what we call the developing a new market. When we introduce a new product in the market, okay, when a business or a brand, okay, when the organization, they introduce a new product in the market, actually they open up another new market in the business that can benefit new entrepreneurs, okay? And then discovering new resources of, new source of materials. Okay, and then mobilizing capital resources and then introducing new technology, industry, and product. Okay, for example, uh, in Western countries nowadays, they have adopted the electric car, right? 
fully electric car. Maybe uh, in our countries, even in Indonesia, uh, I believe we are familiar with the hybrid car, right? So hybrid car means that the we have the conventional car, engine car, and combined with some of the batteries, right? So electric. But now uh, from Tesla, okay, from the Lucid Air, so they have introduced a fully electric car. Even BMWs and also Mercedes, they have started to introduce the new model that is uh, rely on electric, okay, in order to uh, run the car. So actually, this is a new technology, lah, okay. When the car uh, has been widely used in that particular uh, society, in that particular market, so actually, it actually have uh, opened up a new business opportunity to the society, okay? Because we can offer, we can start a business that offer services to new electric car, right? We can start uh, to offer services in terms of the charging of the car, right? This game the same is uh, same goes to the petrol station lah. Okay, but then due to the electric, so new entrepreneur can start uh, open up their electric uh, charging stations. Okay, so that is how the entrepreneur can contribute their they can make a contribution lah. Okay, to the society, to uh, the customer, and also to the countries. Okay. Okay. Uh, now we look at what motivate people okay to be entrepreneurs okay sometimes people uh they don't uh, feel comfortable to work with other people okay they don't feel uh, satisfied to okay, to be directed okay to give okay, to, to get direction from other people okay to do some things yes, actually in the office lah, okay so that's why they are uh, they move to the the resort to the uh, entrepreneurs, entrepreneurship. Okay, they want to start their own business because they want to become their own boss. Okay, so the the what the things okay, that motivate them is because they want to be the boss. Okay, so it means that they want to have their own company, so nobody can give them the directions or the 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 idea. Okay, uh, the thing that they have to do. Okay, because the, now you are the boss so you can give direction to other people and then because you want to pursue financial rewards because uh when we talk about business of course uh the thing that we always associate is the money is right maybe uh we now look at uh nowadays a lot of rich people okay that we know are actually involved in the entrepreneurship they have their own company, they have their own uh, legacies, they have their own brands, okay? So that's why uh, when we work hard in the business, so we can get a lot of financial reward, we can get a lot of property, we can get, we can be richer, okay? So that is another uh, purpose of becoming entrepreneurs, okay? And that involved in all aspects of the business, okay? Maybe because they have a lot of ideas, and because they are familiar with the business, okay, they have been friends with the uh, with the people who are involved in the business, so that's why uh, it's easy for them to be involved in the entrepreneurship. And then prestige, okay. Uh, when we talk about the business, okay, we will have a different perception, perception, perceptions, okay, to what someone who own the business, to what someone who are rich, right? So. The prestige, okay, the, the way people look at you, the way people uh, perceive you in the society will also influence why people want to be on entrepreneurs. And then opportunity to build equity and then opportunity to make contributions, okay. When you become an entrepreneur, you actually have the power, okay, to shape the society, the way how society behave today and also the future. Like I told you just now, right? Uh, for example, in the smartphone industry, okay, uh, so the, the smartphone brand company, so they actually they have the power to shape the society because they when they introduce the product, so the society will use that product and try to adapt, okay, with that product. Actually, those are the contribution uh, that the company make in the society. Okay, okay, and this is actually the uh, added knowledge. So. Is about uh, characteristic. Okay, uh, actually, this is uh, the, the simplest uh, point. Lah. 
Okay, but then actually, uh, okay, I'm, going, I'm still going to touch it. So, characteristic is uh, committed to his or her work. Okay, often this is the characteristic of the entrepreneurs. And then you have to be focused, you have to be confident to do the business. Okay, you have to be disciplined. Okay, when you start the business of color, you cannot simply um, spend your money. Okay, maybe in the first uh, in the first year, you get the money. Okay. And then uh, on the second year, maybe uh, your business is not promising. So you have to be disciplined in order to uh, use the revenue, lah, the money, so that you are not uh, simply spend it on the luxury product or anything else. Because maybe you have to invest your money in the business in the coming years. Okay. And then, okay, this is uh, not, not actually uh, important. Lah, okay. Okay, those are the slide for chapter one. Now we move to the slide for chapter two. All right. Uh, do you that? Can you see the slide for chapter two? Um, this is it. My know this is enough or hello? Yeah, yeah. Is it enough? Uh, uh, what? Oh, I cannot uh, hear it clearly. And now we will continue in Q and A session. Uh, first question we have in room chat. Doctor, this is oh. from yeah. Ada ada also ada ada soalan di chat box lah. Huh? Yeah, ada di room chat. In room chat. Okay, uh, sebentar, okay. Uh, before we proceed, we check uh, the next chapter. Okay, I'm going to look at the question uh, from the chat box. Yeah, you can find this. Okay, uh, the question from the Akmal. Okay, uh, seberapa besar pengaruh budaya sesuatu bangsa dalam menumbuhkan perilaku pendukunos? Okay, uh, actually the uh, budaya, okay, the culture okay the influence of the culture in uh, one particular society actually it play a very important role lah, okay for example okay when we talk about okay when i talk about the nation culture okay we as uh, we have a uh, different uh, races okay it, uh, kami ada uh, melayu kami ada uh, china india and then uh, many other minorities lah okay but then uh, Bila saya cakap mengenai uh, konteks uh, Melayu okay, in, in Malaysia, actually uh, the entrepreneurs, uh, okay, uh, the, 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 apa tu, orang panggil, uh, the past to be an entrepreneur is actually not uh, the thing that we look forward lah. Okay, actually this, uh, the one that who are uh, highly involved in, in entrepreneurship is from the China, okay, uh, Malaysia, China, lah, okay, because most of the Chinese in Malaysia, they are encouraged by the by the society, by, by their uh, family to be involved in the business because they believe that from the uh, businesses, so it can bring them fortunes or a good, uh, lah, the, it can help them to be richer, okay, so that is actually their culture, lah. Okay. Because uh, uh, if you look at uh, in our SMEs, right, in our statistic, okay, those who uh, contribute to the uh, the tax, okay, the, the payment of tax, okay, in the country is actually mostly came from the uh, Chinese lah, Chinese firm, okay, because they have been influenced by the culture, by the families, okay. Whereby uh, we uh, the other races maybe they are uh, they are comfortable to be working as a government servants. So that is how the culture affects the uh, the, the entrepreneurship uh, okay activities. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, so so far. Uh, that is the question lah. Okay, so uh, I think we can proceed with uh, the next slide. Can we? Okay, thank you. 
Okay, uh, this is about the evaluation of opportunities. Okay, why we talk about, why we touch, uh, touch about this slide? Okay, why we talk about this chapter? Okay, because, okay, when we talk about the entrepreneurs, when we talk about how to start the business, we, we cannot run from the opportunities. Okay, so opportunities here means that, okay, uh, something that came to our mind, okay, that we believe can bring the benefit, can bring the profit to us. To the entrepreneurs and also to the uh, businesses, so that is what we call the opportunity. Okay, so I'm talking about okay. Uh, one day maybe you uh, go to a vacations and then you look at in other countries. Maybe uh, the business is about the uh, producing batik, right? So we maybe you uh, the thing the thing that came to your mind is uh, in our country in my country we don't have. Uh, any business that introduce or that uh, sell a product that is related to the batik, right? So actually, that is the uh, ideas, that is the opportunities for this person to start producing or introducing a uh, product in that country that is related to the batik, okay? Kain batik, maybe baju batik, right? So that is actually the opportunities lah, okay? So it means that not everyone will recognize opportunity because not everyone have the ideas, have the greatest idea to think. Okay. Okay. Now we look. Now we want to see how, uh, what are the steps taken? Okay, in order to find the opportunity, and then what are the best opportunity to be pursued before we start the business? Okay. So this is the purpose of this uh, slide, lah, This chapter. Okay. Okay, uh, there are four major steps to be performed by an entrepreneur before starting the businesses. Okay, the step one is the entrepreneurs have to identify the customer needs and also the requirements. Okay, so it means that we have to first understand the conditions of our society, the condition uh, of uh, the problem and also the demand of the customer in our country or in our society first. Okay. Excuse me, sir. Um, we can see your PPT. PPT? Yeah, it is not invisible. Uh, sorry, uh, what does that mean, <laughs> PPT? Um, ini ada slide lagi kan? You mean you mean the slide? Yeah, because we can see for. Oh, so you you can't see the slide. Yeah. Tapi nampak slide ya. Not invisible. Kejap, oh. kejap. Okay, I will share again. Yeah, thank you. Okay, boleh nampak tak? Yes. Okay, sekarang boleh nampak ya? Eh? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, sorry for the inconvenience. <laughs> okay, this is actually the uh, the major step, okay, that the entrepreneurs have to follow before they decide. Okay, before they decide which opportunity that best to be pursued by their businesses. Okay, so that we can avoid uh, the risk of losing the money. The risk, uh, we can mitigate the, the, the time that we spend, okay, to, to pursue the business. And then the second step is analyzing environmental assessment, personal and also the social values. Okay, uh, this is the we have to consider the uh, cultural sensitivity and then uh, what are the perception of the society, what are the perception of our friend, also our family. Okay, when we talk about certain business uh, opportunities, lah, okay, because not every business okay, that is available in the, in the world, lah, okay, in the world can be implemented in our countries, right? Uh, contoh macam uh, business ni di negara barat kan maybe mereka melibatkan alkohol mereka melibatkan club right? uh, night club okay they have uh, they are they socialize a lot right so when we talk when we implement that business in our country maybe that is not suitable lah okay so that's why we have to consider our uh, cultural sensitivity so that is available in the step two okay and then the step three is evaluate business opportunities so when we do the step one and step two, so we will recognize several business opportunities lah that we believe we can pursue before we invest the money. Okay, and finally, the step four is 
we can select the business opportunity based on the evaluation that we make in the step three. Okay. Now we look at uh, one by one of the step uh, in detail. Okay. So the first one is uh, step one, identifying uh, the customer needs and also the requirement. Okay. Uh, but before that, uh, I just want to confirm. Uh, can you see the slide? Can I? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So the first one is the first step is uh, identify the customer requirement. So each business opportunity starting at the needs and also the requirement of the customer for a product. Okay. Uh, for example, lah, okay, in this world, okay, I believe lah, in Indonesia as well as in Indonesia in, and even in other countries as well. So everyone, okay, every people, every human needs, they require at least uh, food, clothing, shelter, education, and security. Actually, these all are the basic needs that we need every day. Okay, for example, Every day we will eat something, right? We will, uh, obviously in we are uh, in Asian countries, right? We eat uh, rice as our staple food, right? We eat rice every day, uh, and then we have uh, we we will drink, and then we have a proper clothing, okay, to cover our bodies, right? And then we have sh shelter. We have our home, lah, okay, our house, okay, to protect us from the uh, weather condition, to protect us from the rainy season. To protect protect us from the uh, sunlight, okay, and then we have basic educations. So, even though not everyone has the chance to pursue their education in the university, but then uh, during their school education, those uh, those are actually the basic education lah, that everyone should have, right? And then security, so security from the outside people, security from the theft, from the uh, uh, white life, right? Those are actually uh, the thing lah, that everyone needs. Okay. But then, uh, in some category, in some uh, uh, group of people, okay, when they have a lot of money, when they can spend more money, okay, more than the, the basic need, so they will demand more. They will demand more than this thing. Okay. So, that is what we call the personal desire. Okay. When we talk about the um, the what we call the the product okay that the entrepreneurs can introduce we can classify the product into two into two category lah okay the first one is the product the product that is categorized under the uh, customer need okay that everyone should have lah and then the other product is categorized under the personal desire so it means that uh, something that not everyone can afford but but then the demand Okay, for that product is still in the market because some of the people they are categorized under higher income category, higher income people. We must orang yang kaya lah kan, orang yang berpendapatan tinggi, jutawan kan, the uh, millionaire. Okay, because they have money, so they can spend more than the basic needs. Okay, so this requirement, okay, this product, this demand from this uh, society. Okay, can be influenced by the culture of uh, that particular societies and then the education levels and then the level of ability and also the personality. Okay, contohnya, okay, for example, the culture. Maybe some in some culture, the demand for the uh, like, uh, what we call a uh, product that is, for example, we are uh, the demand for the rice. Okay. In other uh, society, in other countries, such as the Western country, the demand for the wax. Okay, or some um, tepung, right? Tepung, kalau Indonesia, I don't know, maybe Indonesia sebut tepung terigu ke, kan? Ada tepung terigu, kan? Okay, maybe, uh, and then they depend on the bread to eat every day. Okay, those, those how culture influence the demand of a different product. Okay, and then education level. Okay. Usually, people with higher education, such as they have the master degree, the PhD level, okay, so they have a better job. They, they have better job security. They have higher income level, so they okay, they will demand uh, other products, lah, okay. And then, uh, personality, okay, uh, is based on your hobbies, your preferences. Someone sometimes people like to go for the vacation. 
sometimes people like to invest their money on uh, buying uh, cars, right? They like to invest on video games, right? And then they, for a woman, they like to spend on shopping, right? They go, they prefer to go to the mall and shopping for the a new clothes, okay? Uh, a new makeup products, okay? Those are uh, how personality affect the uh, customer preferences, okay? How far people spend their money, okay? And then analyze, analyzing environmental assessment, personal and also social values. So in search of business opportunities, there are three important things that need to be considered. Okay, for example, the environment lah, and then the self-assessment as well the community. Now we look at the environment first. Okay, in our environment, okay, we, we can classify our society, okay, our uh, people lah, our customer based on the demographic. Okay, for example, uh, population structure, okay. In our society, we have uh, people who are categorized in different ages, right? We have uh, children, we have uh, school children, we have uh, teenagers, and then we have adults and also the baby boomers or the older people, lah, okay? So when we classify all people based on the ages, okay? So we can uh, detect, we can uh, focus which the group of the customer that will be our customer, that will be our uh, customer. Lah. Okay, for example, let's say in one particular society, okay, uh, let's say if the, the, the percentage of teenager is higher, okay, so we can start uh, open the business that can focus on the teenagers. Lah. For example, we can open up the shopping mall, we can open up uh, cinemas, right? We can op open up a cafe, for example, Starbucks, right? We have bubble tea. So those are actually the trends, lah. okay? Because uh, they believe that, okay, the entrepreneur believes that the customer, uh, the teenagers, okay? They prefer to go to the, sh to the shopping mall and then they like to spend their money on the uh, branded coffee, okay? Coffee product, coffee drink, lah, okay? And then if you look at the uh, older generation, okay, they prefer to spend their money on vacations, okay, because they have the money, but then they want to relax their mind. So they will go to the vacation, okay. Or even they will spend their money on the uh, uh, medication, okay, because older people, uh, they have a lot of illness problems, right? So they will spend uh, more product on the pharmaceutical product, pharmaceutical industry, okay. And then uh, if we classify our uh, society in terms of the income, okay. When we talk about income, we uh, we have higher income, lower income, and also the middle incomes, right? So uh, higher income is the power creating opportunity, okay. For example, uh, if we look at people who live in the urban areas, okay, and compared to the uh, those who live in the village or rural areas, right? Okay, for example, macam di Indonesia. Indonesia, kebanyakan yang berpendapatan tinggi, okay, higher people, higher uh, income people, maybe they live in Jakarta, right? So Jakarta, Jakarta mostly uh, concentrated with uh, people who have high income uh, categories, lah, okay? Maybe uh, million and mostly live there, okay, compared to uh, those who live in uh, Aceh who live in the Medan, right? Okay, so when the brand, okay, when the luxury brand, they want to set up their shop, well, they want to set up their uh, businesses, of course, they will go for uh, Jakarta because they know that the customer is there. Okay, the one who are uh, capable to spend their money, who are willing to spend their money, okay, to what their product is, available in Jakarta. So that's why they will set up the business in Jakarta instead of set up the business in Aceh, right? So those are example how business, they target the customer, okay? Uh, how they decide to open the business uh, based on where the customer is located, right? And then the change of the customer, the taste of the customer will create opportunities to fulfill their needs. Okay, for example, fast food. 
the in even in Indonesia, I believe maybe 20 years ago, okay, not really many uh, people will adapt or will adopt, okay, the Western foods. For example, pizza, we have bread, we have uh, Western cuisine, right? For example, in Malaysia, okay, uh, 20 years ago, we, have, we don't have a lot of KFC, right? Kentucky Fried Chicken, we don't have a lot of Pizza Hut, we don't have a lot of McDonald's, okay? But now, okay, uh, in 2021, okay, uh, even teenagers, okay, younger, uh, what we call the school children, okay? Even they start to adapt to eat this Western food. Because why? Because their parents have already uh, teach them how to uh, eat that, okay? We as a nation, even though we eat rice every day, sometimes uh, we can change our taste by eating burgers only, by buying KFC, by buying McDonald's or Pizza Hut, okay? So that is how we change our uh, tastes, okay? Uh, to the uh, Western uh, cuisine. So when we uh, have a that, okay, our taste to this, uh, different food, okay? So of course, uh, the entrepreneur have the ideas to start selling product that is related to the fast food industry. So that is how the taste of the customer will influence what kind of product will be introduced in that particular society, okay? And then we have uh, import and export data, okay? Uh, continuous increase in the value and quantity of a product or services reflect a potential market, okay, for example, local and internationals. Okay, so same goes to the policy making whereby uh, nowadays, okay, uh, we uh, as a Malaysia and also Indonesia, I believe we, are, uh, we have our own trade block, right? We call it after, right? Asian free trade areas, right? Or free trade agreements, right? So in this after, we have Indonesia, we have Malaysia, uh, Thailand, uh, Singapore, uh, Brunei, okay, Cambodia, and other, other countries. Lah. Okay, total up is around 10 countries, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So, these countries, they have made an agreement so that we can uh, export and import okay, our product within this region with a lower uh, import quota, with a lower import uh, tariff, right? So that when we export our product, to the uh, our country's member, so the the product will be cheaper, so that the customer in that particular country can buy product at a cheaper price. Okay, those are examples, lah. Okay, and then studies on local resources. Okay, new technology breakthrough can develop local resources and open up opportunities for entrepreneurs to set up small and large business scale. Okay, when we talk about the uh, local resources, okay. Uh, Contohnya macam Indonesia ke Indonesia, uh, there are a lot of uh, agriculture product, a lot of uh, kayu jati, right? Uh, product related to the woods. So when you have abundance of that product, so you can uh, easily export that product to other countries because uh, you can produce that product at a cheaper price. Okay. Uh, we have uh, some question from the export. Okay, belum. Okay, tak apalah. So, you proceed with the next slide. Now, we look at the personal assessment. Okay. Experience and working in related field, for example, a fashion designer, a lecturer quit a job just to open a new boutique. Okay. And then, uh, it's about the knowledge, okay, and skills. And it's about the interest. Okay, for example, let's say uh, if one particular entrepreneur, okay, they want to start the business, of course, they will start the business or they will be involved in the business that is related to their uh, knowledge. Okay, mm. so for their personal, uh, uh, the previous experience. Okay, for example, maybe you guys, okay, you have you guys have been working in the uh, banking industry. Okay, but then. One day, uh, you decide to open up the business. Okay, you want to be entrepreneurs. Of course, lah, you will uh, start the business that are almost related to your previous experience because you already have a lot of information. You already have a lot of experience in that particular industries. So it will be easier for you. Okay, so you don't have to learn from a new things. Right, you don't have to spend your money and your time to learn something new. Okay, you just continue your business from your 
previous experience. Okay. Same goes to these examples. Lah. Okay, we can see maybe previously he is a lecturer in the design or fashion industry. Okay. And then one day they decide to quit and become the entrepreneurs. But then the business is still related to the fashion, fashion industry. Okay. The new by opening up a new boutique. So that is how uh, the personal okay, the personal experience, also the personal knowledge also includes what kind of opportunity that they will recognize okay, to, step, to, to, to start the business. Okay. And then the third one is the social value. Okay, this is uh, the one that uh, I, I, I thought just now. Okay, we have to be uh, particular, you have to be aware okay, about the cultural sensitivity. Okay? Some of the ideas, okay, uh, even though they are fruitful and successful in other countries, but then if we talk about uh, our culture, maybe that idea is not suitable. Maybe that culture is uh, become a sensitive issue in our countries, right? Because we have to consider the local ethic, okay? And then human perception. For example, uh, if we look at uh, prostitutes in Thailand, right? Maybe it's, uh, it's common for them in, uh, to be involved in that industry. But then if we move that uh, business idea in our country, maybe it's not suitable because uh, our, country, our country is a uh, Muslim country, right? Majority are Muslim, so we do not uh, familiar with that uh, ideas, right? With that activities. So that's why, uh, before we start any kind of business, we have to consider the human perception towards our business, our ideas. Uh, okay. And then after we uh, evaluate our society, our environment, now. Uh, we will came out with several ideas, lah. Okay, maybe we have uh, two or three this idea that we think might be suitable. Okay, to be pursued. Okay, uh, before we start the business. Okay, so the process of evaluating business opportunity to help entrepreneurs choose one of the best, and then with all this attention, commitment, and effort of entrepreneur, they can focus on business opportunity. Uh, that is profitable, okay, that we think suitable only, okay? And here are some processes that can be taken by entrepreneurs in evaluating the best business quality. So uh, in order to evaluate whether uh, the quality that we found just now is suitable or not, okay, it's legal or not, so we have to match with these factors, lah, okay? We have to look, we have to consider the legal aspect, the competition aspect, and then the capital requirement, whether we can whether we can afford it or not, and then the risk, the risk that involved. Okay, now now we look at uh, one by one lah. Okay, okay when we find the opportunity, okay, the business idea, we want to look at the legality aspect. So the business idea is uh, make sure that those business idea is legal in terms of the business registrations and also follow the local rules. Okay, why we have to uh, follow the legal, uh, the, the local rules? Okay, because we want to avoid uh, the, uh, the future problems. Lah, okay? For example, let's say if we have, we, we have the ideas to start business by selling the uh, counterfeit uh, DVDs, right? Or VCDs. Okay, for example, selling imitation of stolen DVD actually that is the business okay actually that is still considered a business okay we sell the, the, the product right but then due to the uh, copyright issue okay because the vcd or dvd is not uh, registered okay uh, so actually it will automatically become illegal business okay because you have uh, you have stolen the ideas okay from the original uh, movies, right? So, and then uh, maybe you uh, download uh, music from the internet and then you sell it. Actually, that is uh, illegal, lah, okay? Uh, so, the implication is, let's say if you start a business, but then it is illegal, so maybe uh, you are not qualified to apply for a loan from any financial institution or banking industries, lah, okay? And then 
the worst case is you can be charged in court due to the illegal activities. Okay. So other example of illegal activities, for example, are uh, maybe uh, uh, human organs. Okay. Uh, by selling home human organs uh, to other countries uh, illegally. Okay. And then you sell the uh, artifact uh, product. Okay. For example, uh, in uh, Egypt, right? They have the pyramid. They have the uh, mummies, right? Some of the people, okay, they sell the product from the pyramid, okay? Maybe they take some of the artifact and then they sell it through the black market, okay? I say that is business, but then that uh, it is uh, considered as illegal because they have stolen the product, okay? That is belong to the, the, the governments, okay? And then uh, the second aspect that we have to consider, okay, before we choose the idea is, we have to look at the level of competitions. Okay, level of competition here means that we want to see who are the monopoly, okay, in that particular industry. Okay, so uh, has to select a business opportunity which is not monopolized by anybody or already have control uh, market owner. Okay, consider the business competition in deciding the type of business he is going to be involved in, okay. It is best not to be involved in businesses that is overcrowded or already uh, influenced by the strong brand presence. Okay, for example, lah. Sebagai contoh, let's say if you want to sell, uh, you want to introduce a new smartphone. Okay, contoh in Indonesia, let's say if you want to sell a new smartphone, right? You want to uh, have your own brand, of have your own smartphone brand, right? So you want to choose smartphone, but then you have to consider the brand, the strong market presence in Indonesia. For example, maybe in Indonesia, uh, people already trust the Apple product. People already have, uh, uh, people already trust the Samsung, right? They already have uh, Vivo, Sony, Yomi, okay? Actually, there are a lot of uh, uh, market player that is already competing in smartphone industry. So actually, uh, the idea of uh, having your own brand in smartphone industry is not good lah because we already have a strong market player in that industry. So you have to uh, change your idea in other industry because of course I believe you cannot compete with this strong brand, okay? Because you are a new firm, okay? And then the third, um, the third aspect that you have to consider is capital requirement. Okay, whether you can afford to invest your money in that uh, industry or not, in that ideal supermarket. Okay, so when we talk about capital requirement, capital is required to finance the investment. Okay, for example, you want to buy a big asset. Okay, you want to pay for the salary of your employees. Okay, you want to buy the machinery, you want to buy uh, the transportation, yeah, you, want, you want to rent the building. Okay. There's a lot of money that you have to spend to start this now. So of course, you have to consider all these things before you start uh, to pursue that opportunities okay, to start the business. For example, this one. Okay, if you can see, we have three uh, kind of business businesses. Okay, they are uh, different businesses, but then the level of entry is different. Okay, for example, the first business is about the food stall. Okay, uh, even in Malaysia also, uh, okay, kalau macam uh, like, jika uh, korang dat uh, datang ke Malaysia, okay, uh, di, di sepanjang jalan, ada uh, beberapa kedai kan yang jual uh, makanan, okay, yang jual minuman, okay. Memang banyak, okay. Uh, I believe in, in Indonesia also, uh, okay. Uh, back in 2015, okay, I've been to Indonesia. Okay, I've been to uh, Medan, okay. I've seen a lot of the food stall, okay, along the roads, right? Uh, okay, so why there are a lot of uh, people that set up their food stall? Okay, because it's easy to entry, okay? Uh, why is easy to entry in that business? Because uh, you don't have a lot of capital to invest, okay? You only buy... Uh, the, the food store and then you just buy a few uh, ingredients okay and then cook and then sell it okay actually that is a small 
uh, capital requires. Okay. And then second kind of business is mini market. Okay, actually this is uh, the fixed locations lah. Okay, you cannot move your 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 stall. Okay, your building. So it is a fixed place. Of course, lah, the entry level is quite high because you have to rent the building. You have to spend a lot. Okay, in order to buy the stock. Okay, the the product lah, the inventory. Okay, and then the second the third kind of the business is franchise. For example, we have the KFC, a McDonald's, okay, Pizza Hut, okay, Starbucks, okay, those kind of business, okay, uh, we don't see a lot in one particular places, okay, I believe, uh, even in, in your location, okay, uh, in Indonesia, I believe you almost see this franchise in the urban area, okay, why in urban area, because not everyone can afford to start the business in franchise industry. Okay, you have to spend a lot of hundred thousand dollars to just invest. Okay, just to set up the business. Okay, so that is why the entry level is difficult. But then, due to the difficult entry, the expected return is also high lah because uh, you don't have a lot of competition, so you can easily get the customer. So that is why the expected return is high. Okay. So these are the uh, what we do the capital okay, that you have to consider lah before you enter. So you can choose any business idea okay, according to your uh, ability of the capital. Okay, whether you have the money, uh, enough money or not to invest. Okay. And then finally, okay, the first, the last step is. Selecting business opportunity and develop business plan. Okay, after all the process and measure undertaken, it is up to the entrepreneur to choose the best business opportunities. Okay, and the action is uh, after choosing the business uh, opportunity, so you have to start uh, making the business plan. Okay, you have to develop this business plan. Okay, whereby uh, you have to put in details about the administration. And then the operation plan, and then the marketing plan, and also the financial plan. Okay. Itu, yeah, uh, so that's it lah for uh, this chapter. Okay, and this slide. Okay. Uh, so I will open uh, the question lah from the floor. If you have any question that you would like to ask, then you can may ask lah. First question we have Miss Rajeshwari. Hello. Yes. Am I audible? Can you all hear me? Yeah, yes, we can hear. Okay. You. Uh, good. What is it? Oh, good afternoon, Mr. Faiz Masnan. Uh, I'm actually a student of the Commune University. I would like to ask some questions regarding to your presentation on your previous slide uh, i mean on yeah on your first slide you said about and uh, what is entrepreneur entrepreneur means usahawan right yes. so usahawan means businessman so do you really think that businessman is same with an entrepreneur yeah yeah this is plan uh, actually the other names for the entrepreneurs lah, okay. Mm. But then, uh, the entrepreneur is not same with the uh, manager, okay. Bila kita cakap mengenai managers, managers adalah orang lain, okay. Mm. Tapi kalau entrepreneurs, iaitu dia refer kepada businessman, okay. Sebab kalau businessman ni selalunya dia, uh, entrepreneur ni dia adalah owner, orang yang uh, responsible, okay, people who take the risk who assume the risk of the firm okay but then for the manager they don't assume the risk they're just working in that firm and then the the risk actually uh, based on the the, the the head of the the firm okay the, the entrepreneurs lah, okay so the manager they can change the the, the, the they can if let's say they don't like to work in that particular uh, company or organization, then they can switch to other firm. So that is the difference between the manager and also the entrepreneurs. 
Okay. Tapi uh, according to Rajesh, uh, very right. Uh, you just asked about the the similarities between the businessman and also the entrepreneur. Right? So actually, they are the same. Uh, it's just a they just use a different term. Okay. Uh, but in my point of view, sir, they are both are uh, not same actually. They are different because businessman businessman itu seperti dia implementasi dari old pattern of business. Sedangkan kalau an entrepreneur itu dia lebih kreatif. Dia mengimplementasikan kreativitas di atas segalanya gitu. In my op- in my opinion actually. Yeah. Okay. But I don't. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, I believe is uh, the businessman is actually a broad term. Okay. Tambah mm-hmm. lah macam kita cakap uh, manusia kan. Human. Human is a broad term. Okay. But then uh, if we classify human, we have men and women, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but actually, men and women are humans, right? Yeah. Yeah, they actually the same thing. The difference then, is gender. Yeah. The, the difference is uh, the name the. Uh, the one uh, the human is the broad name the general mm-hmm. name mm-hmm. then man and woman is a specific name but okay. then all this refers to the human okay so do you do you mean that businessman businessman is the general name and yes, an entrepreneur is. is in the specific yes. yes yeah that's it okay okay thank you and the second questions about okay between power and empowerment Uh, what do you think that a company should have in order to be superior rather than their competitors between okay. power and environment power in and this power. in this recent days actually because of global global globalization and the growth of technology and enterprise okay. uh, actually uh, i don't see a lot of uh, difference lah okay but then uh, to my belief lah and then to my uh, studies and my observation okay so mm-hmm. far okay there will be uh, the thing that we see uh, for firm that can survive in the market okay firm that become monopoly in particular market actually international market lah so mm-hmm. they actually have unique capabilities so for example that something that they can produce but then the other firm other competitors cannot produce for example mm. we have um te- tesla right we have mm. uh, apples okay do they have they have their own technologies we mm. have we call it the uh, competitive advantages mm. for example macam like software uh, itunes right mm. uh, uh, only available for the iphones okay iphone users right. okay ha huh? so android tak boleh guna so maksudnya bermana uh, any brand okay outside from the apple they cannot use that uh, 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 software from the apple mm. so that is why it become unique so uh, so it means that can, uh, uh, not everyone can copy their yeah, um, mm. technologies okay, same goes to the uh, tesla right because they have they become the first uh, what called the brand that uh, introduce electric market electric, electric car that is uh, used widely in the US, right? If maybe because uh, before the industry introduced the electric market, uh, electric car, we have a lot, uh, we have other electric car, but then it's not uh, widely used in the market because it's only like a concept. Okay? Maybe they cannot uh, implement it uh, as a whole, what do you call it, like barang that can be used secara general, secara setiap hari, kan? It's just a concept, so they can't implement it. So bila uh, when the Tesla introduced the product, but then they also set up the uh, electric stations uh, in the whole uh, US. So actually, they have conquered the market before any competitors start doing it. So when you become the first uh, to enter the market in that, okay, so you can uh, monopoly lah. You have the mon- uh, monopoly to control the market lah. Okay, to 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 to. To, to power, okay, to be in power, okay, in that mm-hmm. particular industry. Okay, uh, sir, you said that we have to monopoly in order to be superior than our competitors. Mm-hmm. But in recent days, actually, once uh, a product or services launch in the market, then there will be a copy or a clone of that product and services. So, what do you think about this? Okay, but wait, they're connected again. I 
yang I cakap tadi yang tak akhir kan yang hmm. apa uh, easy of entry tu kan so it depend on your uh, your firm lah whether your firm is categorized under uh, easy of entry or difficult to enter okay let's say if your firm okay you trust you start the business but then somebody else copy your ideas so it means that your business is categorized under business that is easy to enter Okay. okay. So when it become easy to enter, so it means that you hard to create the monopoly power in that particular industry. Kan? Sebab setiap orang ada ke 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 kebolehan untuk uh, untuk masuk dalam industri itu. Kan? Yeah. So in order to be monopolized uh, in particular market, you have to make sure that your your industry, okay, your product is uh, hard to be imitated. Okay. You have to have a unique capabilities lah that came from your Technologies that came from your experience, your knowledge lah. Okay, your mm. knowledge between you and also the uh, maybe your engineers, okay, your, mm. your your co-workers, okay. That will be the difference. That will make the difference. Uh, one more questions, may I? <laughs> the last questions. Uh, you said that as an entrepreneur, we should create product or services based on customer needs but why don't we create a product or services uh, based on creativity so we create that needs actually the necessity so maksudnya uh, uh, so kita menciptakan kita menciptakan necessity itu kita menciptakan peluang itu sendiri gitu so it's not based on customer needs okay. bisa bisa uh, macam You must, dia masuk dia macam uh, they say you want to introduce a new product but then you want to uh, the, the product is not uh, easily available in the market right uh, let's say uh, let's say sir. Uh, the growth of zoom and whatsapp and as like a teleconference application and uh, so many recent uh, so many years back it's not uh, it's not used by people it's not really familiar to people but nowadays it is familiar and mostly used by people so berarti kan uh, mereka kayak yang oke okay, mereka tuh udah predik ke depannya bakal ada gitu ke depannya ini akan apa menjadi tren gitu jadi mereka jauh-jauh sebelumnya sudah menciptakan produk itu gitu loh so, gitu ya betul uh, oke okay, uh, itulah uh, salah satu oke okay, uh, apa deh one of the characteristic of the entrepreneurs is they have to predict the future okay mm. right the one i i told you just now okay uh if you want we want to create the business that is uh uh we call the business is uh, for the 10 years in the future okay we want we don't want our business to start uh, next year and then the next uh, the, the next two years uh, we will bankrupt okay that's mm. that's not the business right So we, in order to start this, you have to look forward. Okay, you have to predict uh, what are the, the the demand from the customer. Actually, the one that you told about the uh, WhatsApp, okay, uh, Zoom and Google Meet, right? Actually, these are the thing that uh, is flourish, okay, because of the customer demand. Okay, mm. Can you imagine let's say if you we, we we don't have the pandemic, okay, mm. of course there is no demand for the teleconference we do have demand for the uh, virtual meetings right this right virtual mm-hmm. classes okay mm-hmm. so due to the demands okay from the customer because we need we need to make class regardless uh, we know that there's pandemic but still we need to make class okay we need to make a meeting we need to attend the the, 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 the office but then uh, virtually okay mm-hmm. so we need to find the platform So we we go for the Google Meet. We go for the Zoom app, and then the uh, because uh, I don't know there are a lot of other apps. Okay, yeah. so actually we use the app because we need it. So that is mm. the demand for the customer. So that uh, so we uh, go back to your question lah. Okay, can mm. we create a product that is not based on the demand? Actually, yeah. it's quite impossible to survive. Okay, mm. let's say if you don't have the customer. Mm. So actually, you have to de- depend on the demand of the customer. Okay. Okay. Thank you for answering, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Novita. Thank you. And the next question we have from Mr. Mahia. Okay. Okay. Um. Ah. Uh, sebelumnya saya nak tanya pakai bahasa Melayu ni, sebab saya tak tak uh, bangsa sangat bahasa Inggris. Dan saya kebetulan juga nak dari Melayu, agak nak 
Nah, ke pertanyaan saya udah saya kirim di chat, tapi saya nggak tanya langsung dengan dokter Faiz. Uh, macam mana menurut dokter atau menurut uh, dokter Faiz tentang wira usahawan yang yang itu lulusan sekolah bisnis jadi uh, intinya antara wira usahawan yang lulusan sekolah bisnis dengan yang tak gitu jadi seberapa banyak perbedaan dan keuntungan dari ya mereka yang sekolah ke lulusan bisnis dan mereka yang enggak dan seberapa rekomendasiin uh, bapak dengan dengan itu dan mereka yang nak jadi wira usahawan tapi se- apa seberapa rekomendasiin untuk masuk ke sekolah bisnis sekolah jurusan bisnis saya gitu. nah, 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 punya soalan uh, kurang 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 jelas sedikit sebab tempat tapi sorry. Ah, tapi maksudnya tadi ah, mau tanya cara rekomend apa uh, untuk masuk ke sekolah apakah, bisnis apakah apakah rekomend apakah rekomend untuk uh, mereka yang nak jadi entrepreneur nak jadi wira usahawan untuk masuk ke sekolah bisnis seberapa rekomend seberapa seberapa rekomend oke okay. um, okay, ya untuk masuk ke sekolah ni kan saya yang masuk ke uh, jurusan bisnes ni di di sini ah uh, memang memang kebanyakan dia dah ada uh, ada ada beberapa orang dah ada keluarga yang ada bisnes maksudnya dia based on the family business lah so they have to business and then they have to inherit that business mereka perlu mewarisi bisnes tu okey jadi mereka uh, menghadiri okey hadir ke ke kelas bisnes okey di university in order untuk faham cara untuk menguruskan bisnes. Okay. Tapi kalau untuk start bisnes tu, actually dia tak, uh, it's not solely depend on the the course that you take from the university because uh, like the one I took just now, okay, you want, if you want to start a business, you have to need a lot of uh, enough capital. So, okay. Let's say if you, uh, you, if you attend the business school, but then you don't have the ideas, you don't have the Uh, networking, okay, you don't have the experience uh, from your families, from the, so actually maybe it doesn't help much, okay. Ia membantu mungkin, ia membantu sedikit lah, tapi tak 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 menjamin yang kurang uh, seseorang student itu dapat menjadi seorang businessman yang uh, berjaya lah sebab there are a lot of other factors that influence, okay, uh, how Uh, to be a successful, successful entrepreneur. So you are not very that uh, they will have a uh, dreams for to be an entrepreneur uh, to apa, enter the business school. Okay, uh, macam uh, I have colleague right now, uh, back then in our university. Okay, during my the first degree. Okay, my, when I do my bachelor's. Okay, I have a lot of friends, okay, uh, but then uh, kebanyakan yang masuk di business school, dia memang bukan aim nak jadi entrepreneurs, okay, the, the aim is not to become entrepreneurs, okay, when they graduating, but then they want to be involved in the banking industries, right, they want to be involved in the uh, large multinational companies, for example, we have Petronas, right, we have uh, um, other brands that is in, uh, in the KLs, right, So uh, after graduating, a lot of my colleague, okay, that is in the business uh, school, they will work as a uh, sales executive, okay, as a banker in bank in the institutions, and then as a uh, junior managers in the multinational companies or in export and import companies. Okay, that actually most of people were working in the companies instead of becoming an entrepreneurs. But then still, oh. some entrepreneur, some of my friend uh, become an entrepreneurs. Okay, but the, but but then majority of them become, uh, they are working as business uh, person in uh, other firms. Ah, oh, okay. Jadi tak tak semua tak semua yang sekolah bisnis berarti harus jadi rausahawan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Around around ninety percent that attend hmm. uh, business school in okay in our university, okay, will be uh, working as a. Uh, banking in the industry, the banking industry, and then in multinational firm. Only only ten percent will become the entrepreneurs. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank 
you. I guess no one else asking. Okay, I'm going to put the phone in and finally, we come to the end of this class today. Thank you for sharing your knowledge with us, Dr. Pais. Yeah, it's very beneficial and important for our viewers. And I hope we can meet again at other event. Thank you for our with us until at other session. Thank you, everyone. Okay, I will I take a screenshot. One, two, three. Buat absen, um, bentar ya, saya share. Oke, okay, terima kasih semuanya. Buat absen, sebentar saya share. Uh, nanti kalau yang ketinggalan, boleh ngecek di YouTube ya, nanti saya bisa di pulang. Link absensinya udah di share. Uh, nanti untuk yang ketinggalan boleh cek di YouTube. Terima kasih uh, semua peserta sama Dr. Faiz kalau sudah kelas uh, su uh, apa sudah boleh meninggalkan ruangan Zoom kalau uh, peserta sudah absen dan terima kasih untuk Dr. Faiz semoga berkenti. Okay, terima kasih uh, Naya, and thank you uh, Lolita and everyone that involved. Okay, uh, hope to see you guys again. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Assalamualaikum and good afternoon.